Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode of Desert Island Movies. We're doing this shelf. Let's do it. Okay, so Desert Island Movies, yes, doing this shelf behind me, which, well, the stuff on it is covered over by, well, some collectibles. Um, so we'll take a look at them first, and then we'll get into having a look at what films are on this shelf. And as you know, I will, like, whip them down and take that one film, the one film on that shelf above all else that I would take with me if I was stranded on Desert Island. The one film that I would choose over all the other films on that, on that shelf. Now, a couple of rules that I kind of stick by while doing this. Number one, if the film has come up before, because I have multiple copies of, of several films, um, I'll omit that film from proceedings. Um, and... Um, sorry, I was just looking, for, was looking at something on the floor. And um, number two, um, if it's a box set, I can't take the box set, I have to pick one particular film. And I, I think that's about it. Yeah, and TV stuff, if there happens to be any TV stuff, I don't choose that. Um, that's kind of set aside. So, let's take a look at what we have on, on this shelf. Anyway, first up, we have a Funko Pop. This was gifted to me at, at Christmas. Um, and it's Mariah Carey. Merry Christmas. Um, yeah, where, where Funko Pops are concerned... I, I don't mind these ones when they're they got the big picture at the back and that sort of thing in the glass case. I think they're quite cool. But I'm not not a Funko Pop collector. I have a couple. Um, we have there a Star Trek ship, which is the USS Enterprise from the latter two, or well, latter three Star Trek, um, the Next Generation movies. We have a. Uh, um, Limited to 4,000, San Diego Comic-Con 2019, um, previews exclusive, gallery, Captain Marvel figure. As you can see there. Get that one out of the way. What do we have here? From NECA, we have Prey, the ultimate feral predator. So yeah, the predator from the movie Prey. They're in figure form. Um, as soon as I saw this, yes, I, I had to have it. I had to have it. Big fan of the Predator franchise. Uh, then we have a... Oh, this is the one with a torn box. Uh, Mortal Kombat figure. Um, yeah, the box was torn when I got it. I got it cheap for that reason. Yeah. That's a, a Mortal Kombat spawn figure. And then we have a spawn... And Batman, because they've teamed up in the comics together. And why not? Well, they fought each other in the comics and teamed up. Um, what else do we have here? We have a little Playmobil Star Trek figure set of um, Krug, Maltz, Kirk and Spock from Star Trek Frida Search for Spock, which came with my um, um, Klingon Bird of Prey that is sat above my head there. With the Enterprise sat there. As you can see. Um, so I'll put that one, put them out of the way. So let's take a look now at what, what films we have on this shelf. Um, okay, so first up we have here, and I have these in 4K as well. It's the Mel Gibson Mad Max collection. Mad Max, Mad Max 2, The Road Warrior and... Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome that come in this lovely kind of tin petrol can type thing. Now, like I said, you can only take one film with you, okay? Well, as I, I do have the 4K collection for this, so. But because it's tin can, I won't get rid of it. Okay, we have the Indiana Jones Complete Collection Raiders, Temple of Doom. Um, 
Last Crusade and Crystal Skull. But I think I've picked Raiders before from a still book. Um, so I'll, I'll leave Raiders from Proceedings. I'm sure I picked Raiders before. I'm sure I have. Um, then we have Back to the Future Trilogy. One, two and three. Great films. Um, and I have these a couple of times over as well. I have um, still book set. Yeah, I have the films on still book. And another, yeah, have a still book set. I have still books twice for them. Okay. Die Hard quadrilogy box set. Now, Die Hard 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, Die Hard 1 I have picked because I know it was on the 4K shelf above me. So I've got to omit that. So I can't include Die Hard 1 in my offerings. But could Die Hard 2, 3 or 4 make the cut? Let me know your pick down below um, as we're going through this. What film would you take out of all these? Um, yeah. Then we have another version of Die Hard 4.0. Or Live Free or Die Hard. It always bugs me that it was called Die Hard 4.0 in this country. Next up, A Good Day to Die Hard. I don't know why I... Um, I, I don't know. I've only watched this film when it first came out. I think it's got a fantastic trailer. Seriously, it's got a brilliant trailer. The film's crap. The film is awful. It's one of those films that, when I watch it, it made me appreciate this movie far more. This was rub. This wasn't great. This wasn't a great film, but... I can accept this after seeing this. This is like a masterpiece compared to this, seriously. Um, same thing happened for me with Indiana Jones and um, Dial of Destiny. Elevates that which came before. Next up. Why these films have never got a 4K, I do not know. Lethal Weapon Collection. Lethal Weapons 1, 2, 3 and 4. And say what you will about Lethal Weapon 3 and 4. And that they're not great films. They're very good films. They're very, very good films. Especially when you watch them now. And you compare them to the films that we get today. They are masterpieces in comparison to films that are made today. Um, I like the whole franchise. I really do. And that brings us to Lethal Weapon the TV series. Season 1. Clay Crawford there. He was really good in this program. He was top notch as um, Martin Riggs. Now, in essence, this program shouldn't really have worked. A Lethal Weapon TV series. I went into it going, nah, they can't. It's going to be crap. It wasn't. This was actually a really good TV show. Um, at least for seasons one and season two. But unfortunately, Clay Crawford was exited from the show. Um... There's a lot of stuff that went on behind the scenes. Old Wayans there. Um, he didn't expect this show to be a hit. He didn't expect it to go on for more than one season. He didn't want it to go on for more than one season. He didn't like the fact that he was the most popular cast member. And there was a lot of onset issues and crap. And he ended up being fired. Clayne Crawford. And Riggs was killed off. Um, and then... Sean William Scott stepped into the fray as a new character. Um, and, yeah, I don't think I ever got through season three. We've got a few um, digibooks here now. A few digibooks to have a look at. So we have Labyrinth, Jim Henson's Labyrinth. This is a beautiful still book. It's got a soft feel to it. Um, really has. It's a beautiful still book. The gold leaf looks like a book. Really nice. But yeah, we're not talking about the how nice that is. We're talking about the film. So Labyrinth is there with a young Jennifer Connolly in it. Is that your pick? Then we have, I've got this cheap for some reason, Kite. I've got loads, of, I've got, not loads, I've got other digibooks over there as well. I don't know why they're not in the same place. It's got some art cards and poster with it. Sam Jackson's in it. I've never, never watched it. Kite. 
Now, great film. Interstellar. Yes, um, Interstellar has come up before because the Amaray. Or the 4K. Then we have La Miserable, which I really love. I love this film. I'm not going to talk about it again. That's seeing the stage show three, four times. Well, four, five, actually. Um, then we have X-Men, Days of Future Past. I've got 4K of this. I don't, why do I keep all this? I don't know. Dunkirk, another one that I upgraded to 4K. But, you know, I don't want to get rid of the Digibook version. Then we have Gone Girl, which is not a digibook, it's just a version in there with a book and stuff like that. Ben Affleck. Good film. Next up, Men in Black Trilogy 1, 2 and 3 um, in a digibook form. Quite a nice addition. I have Men in Black 3 in 4K. Got a very cheap. Um, yeah. I didn't mind the third film. Now this ain't mine. Honestly, it's not mine. It's the wife's. Fifty Shades of Grey. I picked this up in Poundland for her. They had it in there. She already got the Fifty Shades of Greys. Um, but I saw this in there for uh, like £2. I thought, all right, I'll, I'll pick that up for you. It's like a nice little edition with some spot gloss on it. I've never honestly sat and watched the films. Not, not. Not interested in them. Let's have a look what's on top here. So what do we have on top? Oh, okay, we'll have a look at that in a minute. That's interesting. So, we have a Captain America um, DVD here. Now, this here was actually gifted to me. Sent my way from one island to another. Um, hope you're keeping well. As promised, here is Captain America. Hope you enjoy it. Loving the video. Keep up the good work. I do keep this stuff. Um, yeah, that was gifted to me. Thank you very much. Um, it's the mid-90s movie of Captain America. Fantastic. I've got a sort of soft spot, a soft place in my heart for this movie, shall we say. Um, yes. And then we have here, and this was gifted to me by Jimmy over at Jimmy Boy's Movie. So again, thank you very much. Um, Desperado. Um, and it comes in a tin thing like that but it's not only Desperado because in there is El Mariachi as well now I only had um, the third one in the series on Blu-ray and Jimmy kindly sent me the other two in this real collection set which comes in there Fantastic. So thank you, Jimmy, for that. Now, moving on. What do we have here? We've got some Quentin Tarantino stuff. So, possibly, you know, one of these could be a, a winner for someone. We have Planet Terror. Yes, the double film movie thing. I have a still book as well. For that. Then we have Death Proof. Oh, no, that's the single film. Do you know what I mean? These are the two single films. Death Proof there. Fantastic. But I also have... Let's get this out first. Um, Grindhouse. Where they're together as the one film. As they were screened. But then we have Jackie Brown. The only Quentin Tarantino film I've never sat down and watched. I really do need to get to it. I'm going to put it on one side. Give it a watch. Kill Bill. Kill Bill Volume 2. Enjoyable films. I do like Quentin Tarantino stuff. And then we have Glorious Bastards there, which I do have on 4K. Django Unchained. That's a good one. Hate for Late. Another great one I like. And Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which I wouldn't rate as one of his best films, but it was alright. 
if you see any missing it's because I've got 4k upgrades of Pulp Fiction um, stuff like that elsewhere so what else do we have oh we have here okay a couple of bootlegs now the Adam project with um, Ryan Reynolds and Zoe Saldana's in it um, and we have the Santa Clauses, the TV show, the first season of the Santa Claus Tim Allen TV show. Why this is down here, I don't know, but it is for some reason. And um, it's got the book and everything. I didn't even realise I had this. There we go. I got it somewhere, somehow. I don't remember even buying this, the thing from another world, the original version of the thing. I honestly don't remember getting that. If someone had said, have you got this film in your collection? I would have said no. But I have. Well. I'm going to put it up there. To the, at the T's. I'm going to move it up there. But it's there for your consideration. What else do we have here? We have... My name is Bruce, Bruce Campbell. I'm a big fan of Bruce Campbell. I love his stuff, I really do. And we have Baba Hotep. Well, where he plays Elvis Presley, an old person's home. Fighting the mummy. Shame we never got Baba Nosferatu. That's all I can say. Then we have the Evil Dead trilogy. Evil Dead 1, 2 and 3. Well, Army of Darkness is being the third one. Evil Dead Remake, which I didn't mind. It was alright. The other Evil Dead Remake, which I thought was a very lazy film, but yeah, I did pick it up cheap. Because it forms part of the franchise. Then we have a nice lenticular version of Ash vs. Evil Dead. I like the way it just sort of reverses colour there. Lenticular reverses colour. That's really nice. I like that. Um, Ash vs. Evil Dead Season 2. And Ash vs. Evil Dead Season 3 with a nice Alex Ross painted image on it. And we're nearing the end. Then we have uh, another version of Army of Darkness there. There's a sticker on it. Damn stickers. Um, what's inside? I think Matt sent me that. Little um, Army of Darkness. Is that a magnet? I think that's a magnet on the back. But I stuck it in the Army of Darkness box. And my old Evil Dead 2 DVDs in there as well. Um, yeah. The Army of Darkness. I'll still keep that. And then I have another version of the definitive collection of Sam Raimi's Army of Darkness Australian version. And even though it's DVD size, it does contain... It's got three DVDs and two Blu-rays in there. And um, it has like, all the versions of um, Army of Darkness on there. It's got Army of Darkness Director's Cut DVD, Army of Darkness Director's Cut Blu-ray, Army of Darkness Theatrical Version Blu-ray, Army of Darkness Theatrical Version DVD, and Army of Darkness Television Version DVD. But I think these were then available on the 4K that came out if I recall correctly so that's it that's the content of that shelf that's everything on it um, so oh no there's one thing here <laughs> Scorpion Kim um, VCD video cassette disc does anyone remember these more for the Asian market I believe um, they're around the time they were before DVD laser disc time and that sort of thing and they were films put onto smaller disc split over two discs um, unfortunately I think these subtitles are not removable they're, they're hard coded onto it um, yeah and I still have the school pinking like it I don't know there we go does anyone remember them anyway so that's it for the shelf so what would your pick be on that shelf? Now remember, Die Hard and Raiders 
I'm not going with me. So what film do you think I will pick? I'll be back to let you know momentarily. Hi everyone, okay, I am back and um, well I've made my pick. I've made my pick with a couple of runners up before I get into it. Remember, please put down below your choice what film you would have picked out of this lot. Um, and, and let me know the reasons why. It does interest me. So, a couple of runners up for first. So, obviously, we Lethal Weapon. First Lethal Weapon film, best lot. Um, fantastic film that I adore. Um, but I'm going to put it as a runner up this time around. I uh, say this time around, it won't come up again. But it's a great film. Um, Army of Darkness with Bruce Campbell. I adore this film. This is my, this is how I got into the Evil Dead. This was the first one I saw. Um, I it, it cemented my love for Bruce Campbell himself. Um, I think this film is hilarious. I think this is just so much fun. Um, such good fun for a movie. And on any other day. I would probably want to take that with me. I really would. But alas, not today. But the winner. The winner that I will take today, and it came in second, and I I, I dropped it out of a steel bookshelf in favour for another film, and I, I remember I had both of them up. I was going, which one, which one, which one? Oh, I've got to give it to this one and not this one. Now that film gets its day. Back to the Future. The first Back to the Future film. A film that I, I, I favoured Raiders of the Lost Ark over this. When I had the two of them as runners up beside one another. And I didn't know which way to go. And I knew Back to the Future would come around again. And likely possibly win that day. Um, it could come around again. It will come around again. Possibly if I get into the special editions. But yeah, so the Back to the Future, the very first one. Like I said, you can only take one film, not the box set. Back to the Future 1, film speaks for itself. It is a classic. Um, I used to watch it regularly as a young lad. Um, it stands the test of time. It looks fantastic. It's just a super fun family movie. So that's my pick. Back to the Future 1. So that's that shelf done and dusted. Another one done, put to bed. Um... Same put to bed. That's where I might head now. Um, yeah, why not? Anyway, thanks for watching. See you in two weeks on another.